Welcome to Dwell in the Word. Today is Wednesday. It is August 24th. And before we begin, just a reminder that there will not be Dwell in the Word on Friday. I am making another trip to a concert, taking a day off, taking a vacation day. So we'll see you on Monday. But before I can take time off, we have to get through Isaiah chapter 13 today. Not that that's laborious, just saying that's what we have before us today. Beings Wednesday is usually the book of common prayer, but we've read most of those prayers and we have a long ways to go through Piercing Heaven. We're going to do my favorite prayer book once again, Piercing Heaven. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, with all your sweet and precious favor. Come, Lord, to convince and comfort me, to humble and direct me, to chill my affections to the world, and to warm them towards the Lord Jesus. Come, you holy, gracious, almighty reviver and restorer and glorifier of my God and Savior. Cause the graces you have planted in my soul to go forth in a way of love and desire, faith and expectation. Let me hope in the person and glory of the one my soul loves. Then I will cry out with the church, let my beloved come into his garden and eat his precious fruits. Amen. All right, as I said, we're going to be reading all of chapter Isaiah, or of all of chapter 13 of Isaiah today. That means we'll be reading from verse 1 through verse 22. Hear the word of the Lord. The oracle concerning Babylon which Isaiah the son of Amoz saw on a bare hill, raise a signal, cry aloud to them, wave the hand for them to enter the gates of the nobles. I myself have commanded my consecrated ones, and have summoned my mighty men to execute my anger, my proudly exalting ones. The sound of a tumult is on the mountains, as of a great multitude, the sound of an uproar of kingdoms, of nations gathering together. The Lord of hosts is mustering a host for battle. They come from a distant land, from the end of the heavens, the Lord and the weapons of his indignation, to destroy the whole land. Wail, for the day of the Lord is near, as destruction from the Almighty it will come. Therefore all hands will be feeble, and every human heart will melt. They will be dismayed. Pangs and agony will seize them. They will be in anguish like a woman in labor. They will look aghast at one another. Their faces will be aflame. Behold, the day of the Lord comes cruel with wrath and fierce anger, to make the land a desolation and to destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising, and the moon will not shed its light. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their for their iniquity. I will put an end to the pomp of the arrogant and lay low the pompous pride of the ruthless. I will make people more rare than fine gold and mankind than the gold of Ophir. Therefore, I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth will be shaken out of its place at the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger. And like a hunted gazelle, or like sheep with none to gather them, each will turn to his own people, and each will flee to his own land. Whoever is found will be thrust through, and whoever is caught will fall by the sword. Their infants will be dashed in pieces before their eyes, their houses will be plundered and their wives ravished. Behold, I am stirring up the meads against them who have no regard for silver and do not delight in gold. Their bulls will slaughter the young men. They will have no mercy on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes will not pity children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms and the splendor and pomp of the Chaldeans will be like Sodom and Gomorrah when God overthrew them. It will never be inhabited or lived in for all generations. No Arab will pitch his tent there. No shepherds will make their flocks lie down there. But wild animals will lie down there and their houses will be full of howling creatures. Their ostriches will dwell and there will and their wild goats will dance. Hyenas will cry in its towers and jackals in the pleasant palaces. Its time is close at hand and its days will not be prolonged. Well, if that isn't just the sunshine you need to start a day, right? This is some pretty severe language and and there's hard parts. I mean, it was hard for me to read out loud these parts down here that their infants will be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be plundered and their wives ravished. This is hard language. And as we come to it, it's it's difficult for us to know what to do with this. We've been dealing with a lot of judgment here in Isaiah. Uh, I'm guessing as we've been reading through it together, as you've heard it read aloud, you're having some of the same experiences that I am. This is intense stuff. But one thing that I've also noticed is that when we come to the parts that talk about God's mercy and God's grace and his faithfulness to his people, 
it makes it seem all the more gracious and all the more beautiful and, and full of splendor, right? But as we come to this today, we see that the people should wail. We see this in verse 6. For the day of the Lord is near. As destruction from the Almighty, it will come. Therefore, all hands will be feeble and every human heart will melt. This is a severe, severe judgment. And Isaiah is telling them, look, you need to be ready for this. This this could happen at any point. You need to be watching for it. Be ready. In, in fact, you would kind of can kind of say this is a, a warning here, a way to prepare the people for what is coming. Uh, God is warning the people. And we see that as we come to verse 9, Behold, the day of the Lord comes cruel with wrath and fierce anger to make the land a desolation and destroy its sinners from it. I think that we all tend to struggle with this kind of language, the idea that God would have cruel wrath and fierce anger. We struggle with that. Uh, we want God to be nice and, and warm feelings. But then we have to stop and we have to think God has to punish sin. He is holy. He is great. He is good. And when we think about this, it's important that we remember that, yes, God's wrath is fierce. But for us, when we think about our sin, we have to remember that that wrath, that fierce anger was poured out on Christ on our behalf. The judgment that we deserve that that has this anger as Christians, we have to understand that 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 has been poured out on Christ. And while it says here that God is going to make the land a desolation and destroy its sinners from it, that desolation was experienced by us, uh, by Christ for us. And so we need to remember this. But there's also a sense here, as we, as we look at this passage, we have to remember the level to which this judgment is coming. This is a judgment on the earth as well. Look at what it says. This is a cosmic judgment. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising and the moon will not shed its light. The imagery here is to let us know that this is cosmic, that God has power over all of this, and he's going to judge it all. This isn't just a localized judgment. That's important for us to understand, and that's what that imagery is driving home here. And it's and it's very poetic in its nature, isn't it? it even though it's harsh, uh, it sort of has a flow to it, doesn't it? And then we see the crux of it, right? Verse 11, I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I'll put an end to the pomp of the arrogant and lay low the pompous pride of the ruthless. God is going to punish sin. And we get this idea once again, verse 13, therefore I'll make the heavens tremble and the earth will be shaken out of its place at the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger. And lastly, we see that God is very serious about this judgment. Verse 19, and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the earthly example of awesomeness, right? The splendor and pomp of the Chaldeans, they're going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah when God overthrew them. And the imagery here is that it is going to be a complete and total desolation. These people are going to come in and they are going to be God's instruments of judgment and the destruction is going to be absolute. Now this is harsh, harsh. It's hard for us to hear. It's hard for me to read. But at the same time, it's important that we remember that this harsh language does something for us. And I, and I mentioned it in some capacity already. It reminds us that God is holy and that he has to do something about sin. Do we want to worship a God who isn't absolutely holy, isn't absolutely powerful, and just lets sinfulness slide? Uh, we do not want that. That is not a good thing. There is a lot of peace that while this is difficult to leave, there's a lot of peace in the fact that God judges sin. And I've said this already, but we need to remember that this is why we turn to Christ. This is why we run to him. This is why we, we uh, go to him and we cling tightly to him. Because we do not want to experience this wrath. We want the wrath for our sin to be on another, one who can bear it for us. And so may we remember these words of judgment but may it turn us towards Christ. May we load, lay hold to him tightly and celebrate the love and the mercy that he has shown to us. Let's close up with a word of prayer. Triune God, we praise you for the saving work that you have done for us in the Lord Jesus. In him, you have taken on the wrath that we deserve for our rebellion against you. And we see the depth of your mercy and love when we consider the forgiveness that you have blessed us with. 
We pray that we would be given the courage to follow you in holiness and to share the good news of salvation in Christ with those we come into contact with today. And today we lift up to you the missionaries that our congregation supports, both those in our country and those in different parts of the globe. We especially lift up to you the work of My Brother's Workshop in the Virgin Islands. We ask that you would sustain their ministry, that you would build them up through your word and spirit, and that you would grant them faithfulness to the ministry that you have called them to, where you have planted them to be a light for your kingdom. As we step out into your world today, we ask that you would bless the work of our hands and that we would be mindful of your word, that we might exhibit the fruit of the Spirit and bring glory to Jesus alone. We pray this all in his most precious name. Amen. All right, that has us through chapter 13. On Monday, we'll pick up with chapter 14 here of Isaiah. We will see you then.